this is truly our most anticipated uh anticipation now yesterday on the 31st of august starship's flight termination system explosives were delivered to starbase and more importantly work was being performed on booster 9's fts at the same time and it's all thanks to starship gazer for this great information following the flight of ship 24 and booster 7 elon musk highlighted that the requalification of the flight termination system is the primary concern for the upcoming second Starship orbital flight. Musk emphasized ensuring its reliability is a crucial step before proceeding with the next flight. Besides that, the point of installation in the timeline of the previous test campaigns of Starships has both shown a consistent pattern of when the FTS gets installed relative to the test flight occurring. Therefore, the impending installation of the FTS undeniably serves as a substantial indicator that a launch is on the horizon. The FTS FTS consists of two white boxes that house small explosive devices outside the propellant tanks, which upon command would detonate and trigger the breakup of the vehicle in the event of any deviations from the planned flight path. The system tracks launch vehicles by sending data between the vehicle and the ground. It's operated by personnel who use instruments such as radar, telemetry, optics, and much more. The FTS is meant to reduce but will not completely eliminate the risk of any wayward debris in the event of a deviation. Obviously, the small explosive devices will not completely vaporize the vehicle, and the winds of the launch day will determine which way debris falls. For the latest Starship flight in April, just before a minute and a half into the mission, the rocket's flight termination system was initiated to break up the vehicle before it veered too far off course. Essentially, the ordnance on board the rocket detonates to rupture its fuel tanks, leading to a breakup. However, in this case, there was about a 40 second delay between the initiation of the system and the rocket breaking apart. This time lag posed no safety issues with the rocket safety offshore, but it is unacceptable lag for a system that is supposed to terminate flight almost immediately. Must Musk said the problem could be solved with a longer detonation cord to make sure the propellant tanks are fully unzipped rapidly. However, he acknowledged that working through this issue with the Federal Aviation Administration may take some time. So far, there is no confirmation regarding the FAA certification of the new FTS, but its installation on the Booster 9 is certainly a good sign. I don't know about you, but I'm so ready for this launch. Let's go SpaceX! In another notable move at Starbase, this new white structure from the Sanchez sites is eventually destined for the Mega Bay. So we know this is a base for a booster turning rig for welding possibilities. Ship 28, meanwhile, is getting more tiles in the Rocket Garden. This prototype and Booster 10 are already advanced in their build and testing campaign. And should the upcoming flight not destroy the launch site, another flight this year is achievable from a hardware readiness point of view. The test flights are designed to show SpaceX engineers what their vehicle can do. Can all 33 of the booster's engines ignite on time and safely carry the vehicle into the sky? Can the stages successfully separate mid-flight? Can the booster safely re-enter the atmosphere and return to Earth? Will Starship be able to ignite its own six engines, fly to Hawaii, and splash down gently in one piece? Well, if SpaceX can eventually answer all these questions to satisfaction, Starship is widely awaited by a number of customers. Astrophysicists think its capacious cargo bay can bring powerful new telescopes into space. NASA wants to use it to land astronauts on the moon. Entrepreneurs are dreaming up business plans with giant space stations, and Musk wants to launch a new generation of larger Starlink satellites. Oh, and of course, plot a journey to Mars. Let's not forget about that. All of us at Great SpaceX are wishing them all the best on the way to meeting these goals. Next Next up, the final resting place of Russia's failed Luna 25 lunar lander has apparently been found. Luna 25, Russia's first moon probe in 47 years, smashed into the lunar surface on August 19th during a maneuver designed to set up its touchdown try a few days later. The crash blasted out a crater which NASA's sharp-eyed Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, likely found last week. The LRO's handlers went looking 
for Luna 25's grave, using an estimated impact site provided by Roscosmos, the Russian space agency. The LRO team imaged the area with the probe's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Camera, or LROC, on August 24th, then compared the new photos with pictures of the same region captured previously by the LROC, most recently in June of 2022. This work revealed a bright, fresh crater on the moon that was gouged out in the past 14 months. Since this new crater is close to the Luna 25 estimated impact point, the LRO team concludes it is likely to be from that mission rather than a natural impactor, NASA officials said in a statement on the 31st of August announcing the find. The new crater is about 10 meters wide and lies at about 58 degrees south latitude on the steep inner rim of the moon's Ponte Coulomb G crater, the statement added, but probably without the French accent. The impact site is roughly 400 kilometers from Luna 25's planned landing site, which lies at 69.5 degrees south latitude. Luna 25 launched on August 10th, kicking off the first Russian moon mission since 1976 when the nation was still part of the Soviet Union. The new mission's name was an attempt to recall those proud bygone days. The 1976 effort, a successful sample return mission, was called Luna 24. Luna 25 aimed to become the first probe ever to land softly near the moon's south pole, a region thought to be rich in water ice that could potentially sustain human outposts. But its failure ceded that mantle to Chandrayaan-3, an Indian mission that launched on July 14th and aced its touchdown on August 23rd. Chandrayaan-3 is still exploring its polar site with a lander and a small rover, which is designed to operate for a total of one lunar day, or about 14 Earth days. At the end of that period, lunar nightfall is expected to knock both robots out of commission. Back to important upcoming cosmic events, Virgin Galactic's next spaceflight is just weeks away. The company is targeting September 8th for the launch of Galactic 3, its third commercial spaceflight and eighth space mission overall. Galactic 03 will take three paying customers to and from suborbital space from Spaceport America in New Mexico. Virgin Galactic hasn't identified those passengers yet, but we know they've been ticket holders for a long time. Three Galactic 3 crew members are the first of Virgin Galactic's group of founder astronauts, the first customers whose forward-thinking vision and early ticket purchases helped make the dream of regular commercial space flights a reality. Virgin Galactic wrote in a statement, The Galactic 3 crew bought their tickets as early as 2005 and since then have been an active part of the company's vibrant future astronaut community, they added. The trio will become Virgin Galactic's 14th, 15th, and 16th astronauts, according to the company. They'll fly with Colin Bennett, one of Virgin Galactic's astronaut instructors. Galactic 3's passengers will ride in the VSS Unity, Virgin Galactic's space plane, which will be piloted by Nicola Pasil and Michael Masucci. The vehicle will lift off beneath the wings of the company's carrier aircraft VMS Eve, which will drop it at an altitude of about 5,000 meters. Unity will then fire up its onboard rocket motor, make making its own way to suborbital space. The passengers will get to experience a few minutes of weightlessness and see Earth against the blackness of space before coming back down for a runway landing at Spaceport America. The most recent flight of such, Galactic 2, lifted off on August 10th carrying a former Olympian and a mother-daughter duo to the final frontier for the first time. The daughter in that duo, an 18-year-old college student, also became the youngest person ever to reach space, according to Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic is currently selling tickets for 450,000 US dollars, but given that the three customers on Galactic 3 are founding astronauts, they likely didn't pay that much. The seat price has gone up a few times over the years. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.